Hello guys, welcome to this new video about Clip. Clip is a model from OpenAI released uh, 2021 and it, uh, it got really popular even recently because of stable diffusion and it was quite revolutionary for the time especially because it used a novel way of connecting text and images. First of all we will explore what is Clip and uh, why, what does it mean to connect text and images and secondly we actually before that we will also explore why we needed clip in the first place okay first of all the task we are concerned about is image classification so we are in the domain of classification and before we had clip we had these convolutional network neural networks that were trained to classify pictures images into classes for example let's see this picture from google's website and we see that for example before if we had pictures of cats or dogs and we wanted to classify them into uh, two classes we had to create this uh, convolutional net neural network with a lot of convolutions max pooling and finally a fully connected layer that would um, give a maximum score to the class that is most representative for the input image for example the activation for the cat uh, uh, output would be the highest in this case because we are giving a picture of the cat and if it was a dog the, the, the output for the dog would be the have the highest value. This was working well actually. Uh, the problem with this method, with this way of proceeding is that uh, we need a lot of pictures. We need a big data set, we need a lot of labeled data set. So we need a lot of pictures of cats, a lot of pictures of dogs, and someone have to spend time to build this data set and to label them and to verify that these labels are actually correct. This is okay if we have small number of class and uh, they are quite different from each other however in some domains it's not easy to build this data set and it's quite costly actually to build them i think of medical research in which uh, the pictures have to be labeled by for example a doctor or anyway someone who has knowledge in the domain so uh, you cannot just ask a random person to classify cancer and non-cancer uh, images from medical devices so the problem was uh, to build this data set was really expensive and plus what they saw is that this data set could not generalize to other tasks. So for example, a classifier that was trained upon dogs and cats could not generalize easily to other uh, type of classes. And it would perform really badly on other kind of uh, classi classifications. So let's explore how Clip solves this problem. So clip, just like the name says, uh, connecting images and pictures, uh, sorry, images and text, is a, a model from OpenAI. And basically it means contrastive learning images pre-training. And uh, the way it works is written, is shown here. So basically clip is made of two encoders, one text encoder and one image encoder. What do we feed to clip? First of all, we give him a batch of text and the corresponding images, which means that the first item in this text batch is corresponding to the first image in this image batch. So Pepper the Ossipop is actually corresponding to this picture. And where do we get all these pictures? The authors of Clip got these pictures and this text from the internet. They created a dataset of 400 million images collected from the internet that were supposedly uh, well described by the users, by the authors. Usually when you find a picture on the internet, actually you don't find just a picture, you also find some description of the picture behind it, especially on social networks, for example. Uh, people going on a trip in somewhere, they will write something about the content of the picture. And um, this, this is not just a single word. So for example, here we don't just write dog, we actually describe the picture. So this is, why they call it natural language supervision. So the way it works is they take the text, the batch of text, and they go pass it through the text encoder, which gives us some features for this text. And these features are actually then multiplied by another matrix so that the dimension of the features is a particular dimension. And then they do the same with the images. So they pass the images through the image encoder, and then they multiply this uh, feature by another matrix to make the images have the same dimension as the text features. When then 
they built this uh, dot product, this cosine similarity metric, we can see here, in which they calculate the cosine similarity between each possible combination of text and image. And what do we expect? I mean, what do we expect? Since we know that the ground truth is the fact that this picture matches with the first text and the second text matches with the second picture and the third text matches with the third uh, picture, we want all the items in the diagonal, so the, the one we know match to each other, to be, have the, um, most, uh, to be the most similar, to have the highest uh, similarity, while we want the other pairs to have a lower similarity, even zero. Um, but we want these ones for on the diagonal to have the highest one. And uh, actually this code is written also in the paper, which we can see here. Let me check which page. Yeah, here. So here we have a, a batch of images. We pass it through the image encoder to get some uh, the batch. And then the uh, embeddings from the image encoder of dimension di. Then we do the same with the text. We have n text and we pass it to the text encoder. We will get some features from this text encoder of the dimension t dt. Then we multiply the um, the features from the image and the features from the text with the two matrices so that each of them will have a resulting feature size of de. We do the cosine similarities for each pair and uh, we calculate the logics. Then what we do? We calculate the, the loss. How, how should we calculate the loss? Well, basically what we expect is, is that by in the rows, in this row, for example, we expect the, this item, so the position one, to have the highest cosine similarity. In this row, we expect the second one to have the highest similarity. And the third row, we expect the third one. And the same for the columns. In the first column, we expect this one to have the highest, the second one, we have this one to have the highest, and the third one, we have this item to have the highest cosine similarity. And this explains the choice of the loss function here. So basically, we just uh, generate a range between uh, 0 and n, and then we, this is our expected actually labels. So we want that particular row, uh, that particular position in the row or in the column to have the highest one, and we um, compare this one with the logic generated or on the first axis and on the second axis basically means on the by rows or by columns then we sum the two losses and we divide by two so we do the average of the two loss and this is our loss function and this is how the training works for this uh, contrastive uh, training then how do we do uh, inference inference is uh, quite easy and quite efficient also, I have to say. First of all, because imagine we have a picture of a dog. What we do? We don't need to uh, calculate anything from the text encoder, which we can calculate only once. So first of all, actually, what we do is we create a prompt. So a photo of a something. And what we do is we create a list of classes that we expect to uh, work with. So in this case, we can work with plane, cars, dogs, birds, etc. We pass all of these possible classes into this prompt, generate the corresponding feature for the prompt. So for example, we will have a picture of a plane and generate its features into T1. Then a picture of a car and we will have another feature and put it into T2. A picture of a dog and then put it into T3. We compute all these features and we keep them aside. We save them. We can reuse them even for the next classification. We don't have to compute them every time we want to classify an image. So we do this job only once. And then what we do is we take the picture of the dog, we pass it through the image encoder, we calculate its features, and then we multiply basically what we have computed before with the uh, features of, from, of the image. And the one with the highest value will be the chosen label, will be the chosen uh, text uh, corresponding to this picture. And this is how the inference works. As we can see, it's quite efficient also because we only have to compute the features of the image once and then of course we have to multiply. And uh, okay, this in the website, we also can see that um, uh, the, the, the clip authors were telling about the problems they had with the previous models. For example, ImageNet was 
you know was uh, built using millions of images and they see required over 25000 workers to annotate 14 million images for 22000 object series so actually clip is doing it nearly for free if we could say because actually we are learning from the internet and there is a lot of resource available on the internet and this model actually will be used also by stable diffusion and all these generative uh, systems that actually just download the uh, stuff from the internet and train models and the same is done for GPT and uh, all the other uh, language models and here we can see some examples of uh, of uh, classification I didn't load all of them and uh, clip is also very highly efficient compared to the other models and the best aspect of clip is that it can uh, work very well on uh, zero shot uh, tasks so for example uh, for example uh, clip is able to uh, classify uh, i don't know action recognition even ocr but not all tasks he's not efficient in every task of course uh, for example some tasks that are even uh, difficult for human uh, as a zero shot task uh, of course uh, clip is not performing very well on them and some tasks that are totally unrelated to his training data are also, he's not also performing very well on those tasks. For example, counting the objects in an image, etc. And um, yeah, this is it. Uh, another note I wanted to add is, uh, is that how does they, how do they um, extract features? So we have uh, one text encoder here and one image encoder. As the image encoder, the authors use uh, ResNet and the Vision Transformer. And for them, we just extract the features uh, from the last layer and that's it. About the text encoder, what the authors do actually is they use a transformer, but they only use the encoder part of the transformer, of course. And what they do is they uh, take the features uh, corresponding to the end of text uh, token from the last layer so basically it's written here actually it was not very clear to me the way the authors wrote it so the text sequence is bracketed with start of sentence and end of sentence tokens and the activation of the highest layer of the transformer at the end of sentence token are treated as the future representation of the text this basically means that if we watch the attention uh, um, paper they take the features from here and corresponding to the end of a sentence character which in the code is done on this uh, you can see here this is file model.py it's done here so what they do is for uh, they pass the text to the transformer they do the um, they do the normalization then for each of the texts, they check in the original text where was the position of the end of sentence token. They, this is how they do it. And they get the features corresponding to that one. And that's what they use to multiply with the W matrix to obtain the features and then do the cosine similarity. I hope my explanation was clear. I was not very concerned about actually the results, which you can read on the paper and you can read also on the website, even the applications. Actually, what I wanted to uh, show in this paper, in this uh, small uh, video, is that how do uh, how does Clip work and how do we train a model similar to this? Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of your day.